So your doctor tells you that you need a C-section, and that can be pretty scary for people. Um, let me uh, take this mask off. I just kind of wanted to see what it would look like when you first came into the room and what people are going to look like in the room. Since we aren't, don't really have a patient, we're not doing surgery today, it's okay to be in the operating room without a mask. But that's what it will look like when you come into the room. And what I wanted to do is show you the components of the operating room, explain what everything is and why it's there, so that it'll be a little bit less intimidating when you come in. Because when you come in to an operating room for the first time, it can be pretty intimidating and scary for people. And I want you to not to have to be so scared. So let's talk about some things. Probably the most obvious thing behind me is the operating, uh, I'm sorry, the anesthesia unit. And this anesthesia unit has a lot of different components. Uh, this is a touch screen that allows the anesthesiologist to monitor all kinds of stuff about your physiology. Your heart rate, it has an EKG monitor, your blood pressure, pulse, how much oxygen is your blood, they get all kinds of information from this. There's other things like CO2 monitors, what we call apnea monitors, all kinds of other things that test different things about your body so the anesthesiologist can make sure that your body is handling the anesthesia safely. There's other issues on this that we usually don't need to use because most of the time for C-sections, we use a spinal or an epidural anesthetic instead of putting you to sleep completely, what we call general anesthesia. And we'll talk about that in more detail later. But general anesthesia is, is occasionally needed for C-sections, but generally only for really, really super emergencies. And so fortunately, we don't have to do that very often. However, everything you can see, we came into this operating room, and everything is set up to put you to sleep right there. It's right there at the anesthesiologist's fingertips, even though there's no reason to think that we're going to need it. So that if an emergency happens, we're prepared to deal with it. Um, over here, uh, this uh, it has to do is the breathing apparatus that helps breathe for you if we have to put you to sleep. And we have a suction machine as well. Now let's look here at the operating room table. This is the table that you're going to be lying on during the surgery. As you can see, it's very thin. And that's on purpose. And the reason we have a very thin table is that we have to stand up next to the table and lean over to operate. If the table were wide, more like a regular bed, it'd be very difficult to get to the areas that we need to get to to operate safely. It is a little scary when you get on it because you realize you're on this teeny little table and you're afraid you're gonna fall off. Don't worry, we won't let you fall off and we'll get you positioned properly. This here is an arm board um, and what's gonna happen is when you lie down, they're gonna have you lay your arm on this. There's a little Velcro strap that's gonna hold your arm in place. Now this sometimes is difficult for people that are claustrophobic, but this strap is not tight. It's really there just as a reminder so you know not to pick your arm up. Once we get you on the table, we'll put another arm board over on this side so that you'll be basically lying like this, which is kind of a little freaky for some people about lying that way, but try to relax. Remember, we've got everything under control and you're doing fine. And these are the operating room lights. These are high intensity lights and they're aimable so that we can move them around in all kinds of different directions to get the light right where we need it. These handles here, we have a capability of putting a little device on there that's a sterile uh, cover so that we can, while we're operating, reach up with our sterile hands and move the lights without contaminating ourselves. We, we uh, jokingly call those the light condoms because they fit over the, uh, the thing to keep them sterile. But that's how we move the lights and we'll adjust the light in the way that we get it right where we need it. These things here are um, IV poles, and this is where we hang the solutions that drip through your IV to give you the medicines and the fluids that you need during surgery. But more importantly, you see we have these little clips on here. These IV poles hold the drape. So we're gonna put a big blue drape right here, right, so it's right over here on your chest, so you won't have to see any of the surgery. All you really see is the blue drape. And you'll be laying down, basically looking up at the ceiling with the blue drape, blocking your view of all the blood and guts. So don't worry, you won't have to see all of that. Um, generally, if, as long as you don't have to be put to sleep, once we get started, we'll bring your partner in and they'll be able to sit right here next to you, um, hold your hand, talk to you, and the anesthesiologist will also be up here. There'll be a surgeon, um, usually to your right, and then their assistant, usually to their left, and then there'll be a scrub nurse. That will be a nurse that will also be sterile and scrubbed in that will be handing us instruments. And then there'll be what's called a circulating nurse, which is a nurse that's not scrubbed in, that's go moving around the room to get stuff for us that we might need. And then furthermore, we'll have a team from the nursery to hand the baby to to help stabilize your baby once the baby's born.